In this video, we're going to take a look at Texas A&M and College Station with a huge win over Missouri. Absolutely physically dominated on both sides of the football. And when you look at the stat line, it was definitely inevitable that this game was going to get out of hand. Real quick look of just how dominant this was. Brady Cook right here, if you told me that he was 13-31, that's 42%. Even though he doesn't have any turnovers, no interceptions, no fumbles or anything, 42% completion is going to be really bad against A&M. And, of course, Wigman, I mean, coming out of nowhere with a great day, 18-22, that's 82%. So just 82% completion versus 42%, huge difference right there. If you got that, then also you slide down here, you look at just the rushes and the yards per rush, 2.3 for Missouri, 6.6 for A&M. If you just give it, give us that stat, 6.6 .6 average versus 2.3 average from Missouri, you know that's going to be a big win for the Aggies. And obviously right here, just a blowout against Missouri combined with that passing. 82% can push for Wigman, 42% for Brady Cook. Very obvious that statistics were skewed to the better, towards the better team, more physical team in Texas A&M. First thing we want to take a look at is just the run game from A&M. Right here on the very first drive, great call right here. Mug down linebackers, six-man pressure here, just blocking down. Everybody's blocking down. We're going to leave this defensive end for the quarterback to read it. This guard is going to pull and kick this defensive end right here as you're looking at it. Once they get that kick, they motion out of the backfield man-to-man. -man. Only guy left, you got a safety right here that's deep. That guy's getting way up field right here for whatever reason. I know this is on third and six, but they're treating this like it's an obvious passing down. Right here, just a little trap, a wide trap on this end. Running back's got to hit this thing downhill. Boom, get inside that kick block. Now nobody left but safety trying to fill down. That's a linebacker filling the outside in. And right there, just making a guy miss, making this safety miss. Great job there, just give him a leg. You know, they do get him down on the one-yard line. This is a great run, great call here by Texas A&M, Colin Klein with that wide trap against that pressure look, gashing Missouri there early in the game. Obviously right here, as soon as that plays over, they call it down on the one-yard line. Great. Let's go ahead and run inside zone right here on first and goal. And great job right here. Just going to base out right here with the tackle. We're doubling that out. we got to try to get down there to double up. He's going to take this C gap. Pretty wide end here. Might work all the way up to this linebacker. Got to hit this thing downhill. Just get some sort of a movement and find a way to get into the end zone. Backside linebackers free since his end squeezes. Great. One-on-one -on -one with the running back. Got to get one yard. Great job falling forward. Touchdown there to start the game for A&M. Tight end set here, three receivers over here, just going pin and pull. So we're trying to reach right there on the end, going to pin here, pull, pull right here. He's reaching, pull this tackle as well. So we're getting three guys pulling around right here, pulling the lead, getting into that alley. Great job here, just moving the, the front, leaving this backside in for the quarterback read. And, of course, stretching the defense. You see all these defenders getting out here. That's for the RPO. If they didn't get all these defenders out here, they can throw the bubble. But on this one, they – Got numbers to it. I think it's four on three out there to that side, so we feel great to the weak side. Hand this thing off, pin and pull. Kick right there for the from the guard pulling around. Center getting around there as well to lead. Again, just imposing your will. Still in the first quarter. I believe this is the second drive. Just pin and pull. Numbers are great. You're even. Let's go ahead and hand the ball off. See what happens. Two big bodies mashing that one linebacker. Falling forward, seven, eight yards. Not just a huge play, but those body blows, creating those easy runs and leaning on them. Really took their toll later in the game. This is a great read. And I've got this kind of paired in with the run game. You got this guy coming up over here. It changes the strength of the formation. Now you got two receivers out here just treated like a bubble. And you're going inside zone. If this guy would have sat out there, great. We got one, two, three guys out over our two. So our numbers should be good. But this guy's getting into the box for the run. So a great read here by Wigman. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to flip the bubble out here. Definitely don't want to try to throw it backwards. I think this is forward. But... Throw that ball out there to him. Now we're blocking there. As long as his safety, safety stays high, we should be good. He got tons of depth. Blitz off the edge. Replace the blitz with the football. That's what happens right here. Now, hey, just an extension of the run game. Flip out there to your receiver. One-on-one -on -one with the safety. Great job here by the outside receiver taking care of this corner. Be physical on the edge. Make sure we're moving our feet, not grabbing. Uh, but right there, extension of the run game. Make those guys play a little bit more base, or we're just going to replace it with the football. That's what happens right there. Easy first down. Getting down inside field goal range for AM. After those first couple drives, they started running a ton of counter. And right here, very first look that we're going to see of counter. Great, great look here of it against this forefront. You're going to get a double team there all the way up to that linebacker. Don't do just a great job getting to that front side linebacker. We'd like for this guy to get a little bit more vertical into this double team so they can work it to that linebacker. Here's the first kick on this defensive end. He's boxing it, so that makes it easy read there for the running back. Easy read there for the fullback as well. He boxes it, getting vertical. He actually has to try to clean up the guy that they're doubling to and actually leaves the guy that he's actually trying to block. So so if you drew this up, that fullback's actually supposed to block that outside linebacker, but instead 
They don't get up on the double team. He's got to clean it up. The running back makes a cut off if it gets vertical. Again, there's just too much movement right there, especially on a third and three in the red zone. Tons of movement there horizontally and vertically. And the running back just finding an alley, falling forward for another two, three yards, getting into the end zone. And we'll see a lot more counter as we go. No look here of counter. Uh, this time, again, you got this same motion that we saw them throw it out here. This time the safety rolls down instead of back. And they're running the same side counter. So last time they run inside zone that direction. He was coming to split flow zone. This time, same side counter. So he's going right here, blocking down on that three tech. That's what you want. You want that big gap player so you can work that double team. Block back, pulling the kick, pull the lead. Forever shows up. I think this double team actually may go all the way to the backside. Gap pinch here, no problem there on the backside. And on this one, again, on this one, we actually do get a really good double team. We're going to work that all the way back. Again, this guy is outside leverage, so we can get a kick, play side shoulder to it. Easy read here for this fullback. Once he sees his shoulder stay to the sideline on contact, we're going to filter in. Again, try to put your left shoulder on to kick this. Boom, kicks it so the running back can go straight vertical. Again, these guys should wrong shoulder this, try to make this bounce at some point, but instead they let that running back get a straight line to the end zone. And that's what happens right here. Now you got a two-way cut on this safety that has almost no chance. Full head of steam right there. Two-way cut for the running back. Huge touchdown, just a counter. Obviously, we had a lot more stuff going on there. We got that motion that we saw earlier that we flipped out there. And now, instead of running split zone, running counter, right back at it. And, of course, this safety, whenever he rolls down, he rolls back. He's a non-factor now in the run fit. So that ends up turning it from, you know, maybe a 12, 15-yard gain with two guys converging. And now one-on-one -on -one in the open field with a full head of steam turns into a touchdown there for a &M. Here's the very last touchdown. Again, split zone. Running over here to the short side of formation is into the boundary. And on this one, they do get a bit of a twist. This is on a second and four. He's trying to twist inside, trying to twist outside. And he's going split zone to the back side. This is really just the back. He just bounces it. Great effort right here. Outruns the interior lineman. They're getting edged. And that here on the edge, this outside receiver right here just absolutely destroys this corner that should be coming in here setting the edge. No chance. Great block there by six. And then great job finishing, playing fast, outrunning those linemen that were trying to twist up front. They did get a little bit free, so not just the cleanest zone look there as far as blocking, but then on the edge. Way more physical on the edge, outrunning those dudes. Not just putting this game away. This game was already put away a long time ago, but great job finishing it off right there with another touchdown late in the game. So we saw the run game from a ms offense. Obviously, they averaged 6.6 .6 per rush. And now we're going to look at the defense against Mizzou's run game, which Mizzou averaged two yards a rush. And right here on this one, this is a great play by the Stevens of you got an unbalanced set, tight end, three receivers. This is RPO where you could flip it out here if they don't get three over three. And right here, reading the backside defensive end. So this defensive end right here, if he's squeezing hard, we're going to pull the ball there with the quarterback right here. He squeezes this really hard, but then he's able to get back vertical and make a play on Brady Cook. On, this is on third and one. So right here. Right there, he almost sells it like he's going to the running back, and then he redirects. Amazingly athletic play right there to sell that and then still be able to tackle the quarterback. Great play. And, of course, I think if this does end up being a give, even if he would have just sat on the backside, there's nowhere for this running back to go. There's tons of penetration there up the middle. But still, hey, just the individual play right here by the Stevenson end, outside linebacker, number 11, makes a huge play right here for A&M. Already up 31-0. Here's another look of just an unbelievable just athletic play. And this is a play that a lot of teams run, Ole Miss and the NFL. All, all these guys love this play where they get in motion, especially against man-to-man. -man. You're thinking the only guy you got to be is that corner. And right here you see he's out of position for this swing, but this outside linebacker goes out there one-on-one -on -one with literally a third of the field when this thing is caught against Luther Burden, the guy that's supposed to be the number one receiver. And he just absolutely walks this guy down. He's like a velociraptor out there just chasing this guy down. No chance there for Luther Burden. Corner is nowhere to be seen because, of course, if this outside linebacker would have squeezed down with this inside zone, is what they're hoping. And 25 right here is actually a DB sophomore. He actually, he actually gets out of there, runs this down. So great play right there by Dalton Brooks. I mean, just tracking that guy down. I mean, sophomore DB tracking down the guy that's supposed to be the number one receiver in the country. Great play there by Brooks. Now we're going to look at Texas A&M's passing game, and this was obviously the, the most schemed up part of the entire day. To get 82% completion for Connor Wigman was huge. Great scheme here by Colin Klein, and he had a lot throughout the day. And right here, Mizzou got two back set, and A&M's just running a vertical read right here. And Wigman, he sees, hey, it was one high look. Numbers aren't great here in the box for inside zone, so we're going to pull it. And right here, corner plays off playing cover three, so they just throw a vertical read right here. Easy throw and catch right there at the sticks. 
on a first and ten. Easy completion there, giving him a cover three. Corner, this guy Bellin, take it every single time. No look here. This time, great call and great anticipation right here of this corner blitz. I'm not sure if this is something that they gave away with this alignment, how they had the safety down here. He tries to go there. He's into the C-gap. Very great read. They're just running a hitch. Flip it out there, out there to him. And right here you see safety is trying to get over the top of it. Great individual effort right here by Noah Thomas. Right there, safety. Make him miss. Great play. Once he catches it, get vertical. Runs through an arm tackle. And now, just turn to a ball player. <laughs> right there, 17 is helping him out. Another guy's rolling over. Spin move. Really athletic play here by Noah Thomas. Again, make those guys pay if they're bringing those corner blitzes. If you can anticipate it and see it, maybe they have it just based off their alignment where you can check to something maybe like a hitch like they did right here. Great play and a great individual effort right there by Noah Thomas. Here's a look here Mizzou. He's basically going to a cover three, and a and just goes to a curl flat. So he's going straight to the flats. He's checked swinging. I'm not sure if this is a vertical or a curl, but right here, it's a one high look. So you're looking one. If you can take this spot, let's go ahead and take it. If you don't like it, now you're going to find this curl as number two. Then you got this guy in the flats would be your three. So curl flats, obviously great against cover three. And right there, you see that backer? Just that little bit of hesitation right here. This guy, once he slides in to go cover this spot up, that opens up this alley as long as this outside linebacker is flying down with that flat. Of course, if he backs up, you're throwing the flat, but he's low on it. It's right there, Wigman. Easy throwing catch, left throwing curls, stationary targets, don't have to run through the zone, running right back to the quarterback. Easy throwing catch. There's your cover three corner. There's your outside linebacker that expanded. Great scheme right there against cover three. Looks like another cover three look here from Mizzou, kind of late to get down to it. Great tempo here by AM. And you're just running a vertical out of trips closed. Getting there, he's going here. And as you see right here, if these linebackers, they're just getting out. As soon as that ball snapped, they're getting out. You're looking one, probably to the short side of the field. Checking right here, that linebacker's getting underneath. Of course, if he's sitting there, great. We can put that seam ball on him. And, of course, there's another one right there. But you feel these linebackers expand. No pressure. It's just a four-man rush here. So this back, he checks out of the backfield. And, again, you see those backers expand. Great read here by Wigman. Just find your check down. There's nobody around that dude. Check it down. Let's get vertical. And he turns it into a big play right there. So really easy read. Great job understanding the four verticals concept. Those linebackers are getting underneath those seams. That check down should have a ton of space. Take your completion like they do right here. And turn just, you know, anybody can make this throw. It's just a 10-yard toss to your running back right there out of the backfield. And we're getting 15-plus yards. Great job just throwing your base pass game and executing really well. So we saw a check down right there from those backers whenever they're getting really wide and getting out of there. Another thing you can do right there is scramble around with the, running, with the quarterback. And, of course, Wigman is a pretty athletic quarterback. And right on this one, you're getting an empty set here for A&M. And they're running some outs right there. They're bending. He's bending out as well. They're really trying to just find the numbers. And right there, those backers are getting out. Wigman ends up running the ball. And, again, on a second and seven, picks up a first down. So backers expand. you got to do one or two things, find your check down, or run the quarterback and replace him with the football, which is what they do right here. Big run, easy first down. Got to be a willing runner if those linebackers are dropping that hard to get out of the box. So great play right here by Wigman. Great, great recognition. And then good job getting vertical. Probably want to get down right about here and stop taking unnecessary hits as well. Again, Mizzou's just in a cover three look. And on this one, it's just basically an individual effort. You're going an out just slightly to the out, and then he's going vertical. And you got a seven man pro right here. You got your fullback, you got your running back in. So you're really just trying to take a shot. So vertical down the middle, hold the middle field safety. And you want to go one on one with this guy. This is it must be something that you anticipated that you wanted to get is a one on one with this guy. So out and going vertical. Just take your shot, see if your guy can make a play for you. Wigman puts it up. Great trajectory on the football so you can beat this safety, not make it two on one. And then he just goes up. Contested catch right here. Finds a way to come down with it. Unbelievable play. Really good job right here competing for the football as well by 12 from, from Missouri. Right there. AM comes down with it. Huge play right here. If you can continue to just take shots, you don't have to complete a bunch of them, but you got to put a little bit of fear on them, make those guys back up. Great job just an out and up, one on one. Coming down with a huge play there for AM. Once you're kind of toasting those cover three guys, now these guys got to come back and play, you know, still a one high look, but they got to play cover one. And on this one, Missouri's just sitting there starting to play man to man. And you got a snag here, and then he wheels and he goes down the sideline going vertical again, finding a one on one on a double move. One on with the corner. And this time we've got number two going vertical, and you got this back out of the backfield. It's only a five man pro. This is a really good throw. So he sits, he's really trying to get him to jump that hard, and then he spins going vertical, and it really just turns into a fade. 
I mean, it's not much different than that. Just a little bit different tempo to it than just stepping back and throwing the fade. This is on first and 20, but really good read. Hey, there's tons of space here to the backside shoulder. So he throws this thing outside, lets this guy adjust late. Great play there by the receiver, not adjusting too early. And really good ball and trajectory to keep him away from this safety and letting him protect himself and attack the football for a big play. So that's a really interesting look. So they're starting to go man-to-man. -man. Now we're starting to get some double moves that sit vertical. Just turns into a fade. And, of course, you can see right here, quarterback, he's just looking at him the whole way. Gives him a pump, trying to get this guy to jump it, and then just throw that back shoulder. I mean, there's a safety over the top. Don't lead him into it. Great job right there, and then great catch there by the receiver. Another great scheme here by Colin Klein. Motioning in, going across, clearing out here. Back, he's going hard out, and he's running the Texas route right back to the middle of the field again. One-on-one -on -one with a running back, one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. Running back should win that every single time. Again, he sells it like he's going flat. He's really anticipating that, puts his foot in the ground. He's already beat. He's probably beat at birth just based off of genetics. No chance for a middle linebacker to be able to guard a running back if he's decent at all. Easy throw and catch. This linebacker sitting up there spying, basically. So Texas route, easy throw and catch. Nobody left. Why is there nobody left? Well, we saw earlier that they were getting toasted in that cover three, so now Mizzou has to play man. Great. Now you got your man beaters, one-on-one, -on -one, linebacker and running back. Not a great matchup there for the defense. Again, huge play and a great call by Colin Klein taking advantage of what the defense is doing. We saw earlier a spacing concept where they were playing a beating cover three. He's going to the flat zone. This one is a similar concept, but this is more of a man beater. He's coming right here, same thing, but they're anticipating man-to-man. -man. This guy has to get out there and play this running back. So the running back, as he's getting out, he's looking for whoever's manned up on top of him. If they go over the top or slow down, they're going to give him the football right now, right at the line of scrimmage, and he's rolling. You see 11. The linebacker, he's nowhere to be seen. He's getting caught up in all this. He goes underneath. Easy throwing catch. And, of course, these guys are manned up instead of playing cover three and being able to zone that off. So there's nobody left for the running back. Turns this into another explosive play here on just a swing. I mean, it's one of those things that these guys had their number all day. So they had a great game plan to beat man. They had a great game plan early to beat zone. But then as soon as they went man to man, they actually sped up and, and were able to create bigger plays because they were ready for it. And so there's a great job there by a &M having the game plan for both man and zone and took advantage of it with some really explosive plays. Let's have this play on here, the very last thing we're going to look at. And this is one where I saw some people say, man, what, what was that phantom penalty, blah, 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 all this stuff. Well, on this one, Missouri's running one of their favorite RPOs. you got a guy over here that's running a wheel. you got a bang eight. He's coming across. He's going to the flats. But they're actually running counter. So they're running an absolute, they're actually running counter here. So there is a chance to hand the football off on counter. But either way, what's happening right here is these guys are doing nothing but blocking counter. You watch 79 right here. He makes contact. He's running down the field. He's at three already. He's already at four or five yards. You only have about this two or three yards right there distance before you get an ineligible man downfield. And right here they push it all the way down the field for a touchdown. The ball's caught 30, 25 yards down the field. And this tackle, when this ball is thrown, is all the way up here. Five yards down the field. Line of scrimmage is right here on the 25. Easy call there for the officials. And I don't know how that's even controversial. So can't be blocking downfield when the ball is past, past the line of scrimmage. So easy call there. I'm not sure what the call was. Obviously, Mizzou's probably hoping to hit this thing before he gets five yards down the field. Uh, but the schematics of that running counter at it as opposed to inside zone or zone base make that where it's more conducive for those guys to get downfield. Obviously, you're hoping that doesn't get called if you're the offensive staff from Mizzou. But it's the correct call. Kept him from having a touchdown there early and really kept him from getting any momentum all day. With all that being said, it was an awesome day for A&M. With a much more physical team on both sides of the football, much more efficient passing the ball and running it. If they continue to grow and get better like they have over the past about three or four weeks, they're a pretty good football team. And Colin Klein did a great job. That offensive game plan was unbelievable. You can definitely see why he's one of the best ones in the country. But make sure you subscribe so you can catch everything we have for this college football season. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.